Hi, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to talk about the chat GPT release that we have seen just yesterday. I received the email stating that there is a new version of chat GPT out there. So let's take a look and look on the website, what is actually new and what is the modifications they made to the new GPT-3 model. If you head over to the website of OpenAI, and go to this news article, I will link it below. You will see that there's a new model that's called Instruct GPT. And the new model is better in answering questions or understanding what you want from the model. The biggest difference you will notice is that they say that the new Instruct GPT model is made to follow the instructions of the user. So here they said the prompt explained the moon landing to a six-year-old in a few sentences. And then you see here the answer of the completion of the GPT-3 model. And the completion of the Instruct GPT model would be people want, went to the moon and they took pictures of what they saw and sent them back to the Earth. And they even sent pictures from the moon when they already has been all in the rocket, right? So have you been on the moon? I'm not sure about that. To make it easy for you, I will go through all the paragraphs and explain to you what's actually new. So in the first paragraph that is marked here in black, they are saying that the models, GPT-3 language models, are trained by guessing basically the next word. So this can lead to situations where it's not truthful or can even be harmful, they state in this paragraph. More helpful and more aligned API. A, A. So the biggest change seems to be that they move the model a little, not just from guessing what the next word would be. They did a change in reinforcement learning from human feedback, R R L H F. That means that people, humans, will also give feedback. Humans will be in the loop. They will look at the outcome and they will help to modify. They state that they also did this in the playground. So they're using the playground for that and they remove all the person data, of course. So they are not just using the prediction what the most likely next letter or word would be. They are also now putting the humans in the loop to help with the quality and with the validation of the output. They state in the next paragraph that they don't make up so many facts, that they are actually better in the truthness. They're telling more true stuff. They're not hallucinating that much. As we know, this can be a big problem. If you ask ChatGPT, something oftentimes comes up with making up the stuff. Also, they say it's not this violence and all this uh, toxic stuff, as they call it, got minimized. And they even managed to have this done on a data set. This is 100 times smaller than the data sets before because they changed the approach, how they are training and evaluating the data at the moment. So they're saying this is already the standard implemented now in the models that they're having. And they believe that fine tuning, as we can also do with our own models, they're doing basically fine tuning on a high level. They're fine-tuning their big data set. They have humans in the loop, and the humans are able to fine-tune the output. If this is good or bad, it's up to you to decide, because who can decide if information is true or false and how you're going to fine-tune it? So it's questionable if some data maybe gets more normalized and other data gets pushed in a certain direction. but. They're speaking about fine-tuning. It's basically the same as we can do with our own models. One, two. So this paragraph is all about the harmful output and the untruth output that they're trying to get under control by fine-tuning basically the model, having the humans in a loop and fine-tuning the model. GPT models are significant. So here in this chart, we see a measurement. They measure it from one to seven. This is a scale or a internal measurement they have, and they're measuring how good or how useful the output basically is. And you see here 
in the first line, there's the instruct chat GPT and they're saying it's much better. Supervised fine tuning, instruct GPT, so it's a combination of the fine tuning and this leads basically to better results they have seen already in the moment. This is also very interesting, probably the most interesting of the video here, we see actually the comparison, real toxicity. Here they measure the toxicity, for example, real toxicity, GPT, 0233. I don't know really what these numbers mean here, but you see here, they are stating that the toxicity is going down in a struct GPT. Truth for QA here also a little, it's more truthful and also hallucination seems to be really minimized here because the GPT is here up 0.4 and the instruct GPT is just 0.1. Of course, the supervised fine-tuned model where humans do a lot of fine-tuning will have less hallucinations and perform better because there's a lot of human work, human feedback loop they're going to implement. Custom assistant appropriate, we see GPT 0 0.8, 0 0.8, the super fine tuned and 0 0.9 instruct GPT, where it's even better. So finally, they found that this model works best for them. You see here the split, sometimes the super fine tuned model is a little better or in many cases, but I guess there's a lot of cost involved with that. And it's much more complicated to have humans in the loop. And they decided that the Instruct GPT model at the moment drives the best results. So they're implementing that in their models. If you want to go a little deeper here, they describe how the steps actually work, but this will go a little too deep into that video. I just wanted to let you know that there is now a new model, a new GPT model that should give you better answers if you ask the right questions. I hope this video was helpful and you learned something. You have some AI news that you can take away from today's video. I see you in the next video. All the best for you. Take care. Bye-bye.